honestly, I don't, I don't really know what to say anymore. Uh, yesterday I did some bike riding, uh, nothing crazy, right? You know, stationary bike, busted out some 15, 20 minutes on the bike. And what do you, what do you know? I, um, I ended up uh, waking up this morning with doms. Uh, I don't know, man. Like I, I've done sets of 20 on the squats uh, with really good weight. I remember when I did 31 reps with 100 kilos. Uh, I woke up the next day not having doms in my quads. <laughs> but a simple, you know, easy ride on a damn stationary bike produces doms. The hell is going on, man? Obviously, I did, I don't know, hundreds upon hundreds of hundreds of reps in those 20 minutes. I'm just, you know, I don't even know how many <clears throat> a minute I was getting. So I think I was averaging 40, 50, 55, something like that rev, uh, revolutions per minute. Uh, so what's a one revolution? Is that two pushes with the, let's say one push per leg, right? Uh, so I've done 45 reps per leg per minute. Times that by 15, let's say, I don't know, five, six, seven hundred reps with the damn thing, right? And that produces DOMS. I don't know what it is about my quads. I mean, I would love to see what fiber type I am. I'm probably normal like everyone else, 50, 50, whatever. But for some reason, I don't get DOMS anymore doing, you know, singles, doubles, triples, tens, twenties, even freaking thirties. The barbell squat tends to make me use my posterior chain. It's a, it's a well-proven thing for me. I've spoken about this in the past. So, I mean, I don't want to say the DOMS is, you know, the thing that we're chasing here, but it's a really good indicator of what the hell is going on, which muscles are working. So a simple bike ride, you simply cannot use your posterior chain. It's, it's a freaking quad exercise. You know, maybe if you put cleats on, I think that's what they're called, those little clipping things. If you have cleats on, you can pull and push. So maybe that's a little bit of hip flexor action and a bit of hamstring action and then push with the quads. Uh, obviously, yesterday I said I felt a little bit of side glute. If I uh, put my hands on the handlebars and I lean forward, it was going to be a little bit more of a glute max. But if I'm sitting upright, you know, chilling out, then it's uh, the glute medius and minimus. Uh, but, you know, that don't hurt this morning. What hurts is quads. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm debilitated from the damn doms, but I'm feeling my quads. Uh so before I came to the gym today, I, I did another 15 minutes on my bike at home. Then I came to the gym some maybe two or three hours after that bike ride. And I did another 15 minutes as a warm up. And then I did this session. Uh, the quads are sore. The quads are sore, but I like it because it's a really good mind muscle connection. It's like, okay, I know where you are because you hurt. You're yelling at me right now. Uh, so... I mean, all of these thoughts have kind of run through my mind of all the times that I've ever had DOMS in my quads. And obviously, the reason why I keep saying DOMS in my quads is because I feel like if I have a mind-muscle connection with the quads, then I feel like I squat more upright. But if my quads are asleep and not hurting, and I'm pushing really hard with the squats, I just lean over more and more, and I end up getting lots and lots of DOMS in the adductors. For me, the adductors is what comes to mind when somebody says squats to me, adductors. Uh, those are the first things that freaking hurt. Uh, maybe if I really, really push the volume, I'll have my uh, glutes talk to me the following day as well. But for the most part, it's just adductors. But a simple bike ride, a unilateral freaking thing, stationary, I'm not, like I'm just sitting on my ass, quads start working. Now, I'm not saying that bike riding is going to get you to a thousand freaking pound squat. I'm not saying that at all. But it's just interesting how it does that because it, it puts you in a movement pattern where you are not allowed to use your butt you know, you can't lean over. It's just, you're sitting on your damn ass. So the only way you can get the pedal going is quads. So it's kind of neat like that, where you can uh, have a machine dictate the pattern um, of movement. And sometimes, you know, I'm not a fan of, of, you know, machines or whatever, but sometimes these machines have a place. I mean, I've done hack squats in recent times. I've done leg press in recent times. I've done lots of lunges, reverse lunges, all that stuff, and nothing really produced the DOMS. And now, you know, all of these exercises, I never did over 20 reps, let's say, you know, 20 repetitions per leg. Uh, with the squats, I went up to 30, right? Maybe started the year, I did bodyweight squats, you know, uh, working up to like set of 50 or whatever, whatever they ended up doing to get a thousand damn uh, reps in a day. I think it was like 40, I want to say 45 down. So 45, 44, 43 in sets. 
Uh, and I remember the first few days I had a little bit of DOMS. Uh, but with bike riding, you're talking hundreds of reps. One, hundreds and hundreds of reps. I mean, I'm sure if I did half an hour of the damn thing, I'd have thousand reps. I mean, some people go for like a four-hour bike ride through the hills here in Adelaide. You know, they go for a ride. You know, we go mountains, not mountains, hills all around the, the place. So it's a, you know, a lot of, a lot of people uh, have, you know, they cycle through the hills and whatever. You know, it's a popular thing here in Adelaide. I mean, I've got a push bike, but it's a fixie, what you call it. It doesn't have any gears. It used to take me to uni and back and school and back and that kind of thing. Um, but I started, like, thinking to myself, I mean, the stationary bike is okay. It's not bad at all, but, you know, I'm a fan of outdoors. If I could kind of in- incorporate this somehow, if this ends up helping me somehow, I mean, uh, the reason, the, the whole motivation behind all of this for me was unilateral exercises are going to target the medius and the minimus of the glutes, so, so the side glutes. I want that. I need that to strengthen up so my TFL chills out and my adductors let go. I get better at splits. I get better mobility in the squats. And lots of good things happen when you, you know, turn on the side glutes. Uh, I'm a bilateral stance, historically speaking, the last decade. I've spent very little time, if you think about it, as a percentage of training time uh, on one leg. Very, very little time. I've spent most of my time, you know, on two legs, deadlift, squats, that kind of thing. Uh, But I'm, I'm finding value in sub 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 optimal or sub maximum efforts for many damn repetitions of unilateral work uh i guess running would probably have the same benefit walking maybe hiking same benefit anything that has your one leg you know for me it's really accessible uh to use a bike because you can kind of you know you don't need a hill i have to drive 20 minutes 30 minutes well not maybe 20 minutes to get to the hills here in Adelaide to actually walk on a trail. Uh, that's a glorious freaking time commitment. Um, but a bike, I can just put that thing in front of the TV and just like my my stretching, I can do that. So I can put them, you know, one next to another and just get on the bike, do that, jump down, do the splits, do the bike, do the splits. I can rotate that. I mean, I don't have that much damn time, but <clears throat> you can you understand what I mean, right? I can, I can bike ride at home before my training sessions uh, warm up those side glutes, maybe even the quads, as I, I'm finding out now. And then you can, uh, you know, get through a session and then stretch. So I'm finding I'm finding some things, again, about, I don't know, my body. Uh, I'm still puzzled, man. I'm still puzzled how all out AMRAP, you know, as many reps as possible, you know, hard AMRAP with, with freaking squats, 100 kilo squats, I don't get doms in my quads man uh that's a bizarre thing to me man like because you know that's let's say 50 percent of my uh 50 percent of my maximum squat so you're talking about like if you're thinking about hypertrophy and all the bodybuilding rules that people have come up with over the years that's where you want to be right like you want to you want to move some heavy weight bike riding should not be doing this to me so clearly what's happening here is that uh, different fibers are being activated by riding a damn bike <laughs> so whatever i'll you know i'll continue to do it i mean i don't mind it's not exactly the funnest thing in the world for me but you know i can watch my freaking sports highlights you know uh while i'm on the bike chilling out and uh i mean you can go pretty hard with bike riding as well or do interval like you know uh you know 15 seconds hard you know sprinting and then 45 seconds of just chilling out relaxing. you can do that as well like, you know, interval training, that, you know, that's, that's possible. But I think what's, what's happening here is I don't need to be going hard with it because if I'm going hard with it, I might as well do some lunges because that's hard. So I think the thing here is get hundreds of reps under the belt. I, that's what it seems like to me. Uh, because I feel like if I stand up on the bike and I start pushing, I'm going to start getting the muscles which are really strong on me, which is the posterior chain somehow. I mean, I'm just thinking out aloud. Maybe I'm wrong with this, but... That's that's kind of what I what I what I'm thinking is, is going to happen. So suboptimal, man. I remember I, I was telling you guys, sub fifty percent work, man. Sub fifty, sub fifty. Um, damn, man. This is like I don't even know what, what the hell this is. Like sub ten percent freaking weight. Oh man, I don't even know. I don't even know. But it's bizarre. It's bizarre. Yeah, this is the funny thing. Like I've trained so 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 much over the years. And to this day, you kind of get surprised by certain things. And now I'm kind of running the film back uh, about certain things. Like I've got a family friend who is uh, like a you know big rider. You know he he's got a 
you know, ten thousand dollar freaking uh, not microfiber, carbon fiber bike, and he takes that thing to the hills. He's got a whole crew with him, and they're all uh, you know ride bikes, and you know uh, uh, they're into it. And I remember like you know during summer you were sitting around drinking beers, and I'm like, damn, well, you have bigger quads than me, man. I'm the squad every guy over here. You're riding a bike and you got freaking huge quads, man. I'm like, the hell is going on here? <laughs> it's like, are we being fooled? But this is where you like, you, you take lessons from other genres of fitness, other areas. And you're like, what us gym bros and barbell guys, we don't have all the damn answers. Look at other disciplines, man. There are cyclists out there with bigger quads. Bigger quads than damn bodybuilders. Like natural bodybuilders. Obviously, if you're on trend, freaking you could be. Doing the tricep extension, have bigger quads than everybody. Um, but anyway, the, the point is, it's it's always exciting for me to look at other genres and see lessons. The bike rider that I know, he's got bigger quads than me. And he ain't squatting, he ain't deadlifting, he's just riding a damn bike. Isn't that interesting? Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.